Hey boys, this is my 2015 Mega Cab Cummins powered truck. I had a problem with the SCR and DPF. I was driving it towing an 18,000 pound trailer full of horses and I lost power. I was going about five miles an hour. I diagnosed it and changed a fuel filters. Then I put washers in between the DPF and SCR. That made it run better, so I realized the SCR was plugged, but I also saw the DPF was plugged. With no luck making them work, I went to eBay and I found a used set, and a guy had 6,000 miles on him, and he was a few hundred miles away. I went and picked him up for 400 bucks and brought him back. I had to convert it to fit my truck. I'll show that in this video. And I just wanted to show this because there's not much video online of diagnosing this problem. Here's my DPF when it was plugged. I'll show it later on, but I hope you enjoy this video and find it useful. I'm trying to remove this DEF injection nozzle from this catalytic converter. This is a 2016 model. It's been on a truck in northern Ohio for three years. Um, of course, this gets the salt and stuff from the front end and all the heat so it's not coming off um, I had sprayed it with WD-40 let it soak for a couple of days from from the back you can see the back of the bolt um, it's not moving so I'm gonna put some heat on it and see what happens okay so what I did is I put heat on this flange I got it to glow red pretty quickly I use a propane and oxygen and my cutting torch and the first step I'm going to try is let it cool I'm going to try to get it hot and let it cool because I believe if you have a cherry hot and you try to remove it while that may work in some cases you run the risk of galling especially with a stainless steel uh, like we have and it looks like a carbon steel I don't know if that's a different stainless bolt but uh, I may look for a stainless bolt to put in there. So we'll see how it comes out. So on a small bolt like this, when you're removing it, it's hard to tell the difference between shearing torque and the bolt coming loose. So as it turns like this, you try to look in the back and see. I'm in bright sunlight, so it's hard to see. But I feel like I'm right at the shearing torque. But see, what then, what I often do is I will reverse my uh, ratchet and I'll go forward. And that way I know I can feel the looseness. So I know I am loosening. However, there may be galling in there. So. I just keep slowly going back and forth like that and not crazy about WD-40 used it my whole life um, PB blaster I don't know if there really is a product that works um, or if you have time to let them work so I'm gonna do this off camera and get it out so here we have Let's bolt out. And it looks pretty good. Occasionally you'll get some galling where the stainless steel thread will actually stick to this carbon steel bolt. Um, so it doesn't really look like we got that. But I probably will look for a different bolt to go in there because I don't like the way the head rusted away. So um, the other side here now see that's that's eroded away a lot more so what uh, what I've got here to try is I've got my six point this is an old uh, SK it's a six point nine millimeter socket and look at that it almost fits on that so I'm gonna drive it on uh, if that doesn't work I'll find another uh, probably a 12 point socket that I can drive on so we'll see how this goes okay so what I've done is I've taken this mallet and I was tapping on the end of the 
bolt um, just to drive, just to loosen that up, just to give it some uh, vibration to loosen that up. Thought about using my uh, my air impact driver, my impact uh, cutter, um, but as I was driving on it, look what happened. Look at this shit. Okay, and that's with this one still intact, not turned. This is how these things are put together from the factory. So hopefully there's no galling. So there's obviously no tension on it. I just have to get the threads to come out of the stainless steel. And, and anybody that's worked with stainless steel knows it is a bugger. It loves to gall. It loves to uh, connect. So uh, I'm going to first try and turn it a little bit without heat. And then if I put a little heat on it, I will let it cool. So let's see how it goes. So I just put the heat on it. And I really don't know what's in these things. Obviously, to me, with an electrical connector here and a fluid injection over here, um, this is some kind of uh, solenoid valve that opens. It, it'll open and close. Um, the reason I'm taking this off is the person I got this from said the truck was using a lot of duff fluid, and that's why he decided to take it off. Um, so I'm going to take the one from my system and put on here. And my SCR is blocked and plugged, so it's going to be abandoned. So if I break the bolts off on mine, I don't care so much. This one, I want good thread. So when I tried to remove this bolt with no, uh, no heat, I just didn't like the feel. You know, what are these 6 millimeter bolts? I mean, they take a 10 millimeter wrench, but they're like a six millimeter diameter, like a quarter inch bolt. They're easy to shear off, really easy to shear off when they're stuck. So uh, I'm going to let this cool, spray some WD-40 on it, let it soak in a little bit and see if it'll come out like the other one. So I've let this cool a little bit. Um, I keep dousing it with this. You can see it smokes. Still a few hundred degrees, but... Uh, I keep dousing it with the WD-40, hoping it will wick up into the thread. So, um, what I've done here is take my ratchet and take it in the off position. And then you can see, it seems to go pretty easy. And then stops. So, I'll go just a little bit of a turn. And then I'll go back. Now, obviously, it's not shearing. But we don't know about galling. So by doing this back and forth movement like this, very minimally, we are either working the WD-40 into the connection so it can do its thing, or we are working the galling in through the thread. Either way, it's likely This is going to come off. So, and of course, the alternative to this would be drilling this out. And since it's carbon steel, it would drill out and it might retap okay. But if you've dealt with stainless steel, you know that a big deal. It it can drill very easily because it's soft. But if you spin your drill bit in the stainless, it will work harden to the point where you cannot drill it. So, it's a, a big deal. And of course, it may depend on what kind of stainless. 316, 40, whatever. So, so we got this out. So, on to the next thing. So, I probably will use my knock sensor this is a rear knock sensor there's two on the truck uh, so I probably will use the one that came off my truck um, you can see the part number on this one is uh, 6822748 uh, damaged XAA looks like 6 so 6827486AA so I'm probably going to use mine Looks like it got chewed on a little bit, maybe when it was taking it out, but I'll just use mine.
Okay, so this really isn't a tutorial on removing the exhaust, but I'm going to cover it all anyhow. So, what I've done is I've previously had this off just to take a look at it and see how the truck ran without it. Uh, yeah, you can start the truck without it. Um, I think the codes will go away when I put the different one on. So, I, uh, I pulled these 16 millimeter size nuts off. Uh, I was able to use an impact for three of them. Soak them with WD-40 and get them off. Get them clean, pull them off. The fourth one, which is the top one on the inside, I was not able to get it with the impact. So what I did is I took my four inch grinder uh, and I, and I, ground the nut, I ground half of this nut away, which then released this, and I was able to loosen it with a chisel and unscrew it. See, the reason I wanted to do that is I was afraid it was going to break off, and these are pressed in studs, which, yeah, you can replace them, but it's a lot of mess. Uh, I don't know what they're made out of, but they're pressed in, and I got a feeling they'd be real hard to uh, change, so why not just... Uh, deal with the potential of grinding away part of the thread because you're okay there so You take those off. There's a clamp on the back And in my case on a five-year-old truck I had to do the same thing with that clamp now when I say it's five years old I have to remember this unit was replaced under warranty with the previous owner uh, three years ago, so it's really sad that it became plugged now, but uh, kind of thinking maybe I had some bad fuel or some other issue. If anybody knows anything else that might do it, I did have plug fuel filters. I don't really have gross signs of uh, coolant leak or anything like that. I don't know what a coolant leak does. There's not a lot on the internet. No pictures, no stories, nothing. It just says it can happen. Loosen the clamp in the back. You can pop off. I love these hangers. Spray some, I found this on uh, YouTube, spray them down with some uh, brake clean and it makes them very slippery. So you can pop them off, leave this in place, and you're good to go. Okay, let me address this. You can see that's a zip tie hanging out of there. So the clamp that comes in there you're supposed to be able to just squeeze it. Just squeeze the white and it will release the clamp and come off. Wouldn't work for me, folks. So, uh, after messing with it, trying to save it for an hour because I don't know if they're um, available, I ended up yanking it out. And what I, it just needs something in there to keep it from pulling off. So what I ended up doing is I took a small zip tie and I took my... I have a craftsman cutter. I took that cutter and I made this thing narrow enough to fit in that slot. And uh, I didn't even zip tie it. It's just in there. And it will not allow, allow this to pull off. So that's what I did. And the control wire that is on the top. There's a red locking tab in there that you have to push up. Now, when I pushed up on it, it's five years old. When I pushed up on it, it broke. Uh, so I pushed it from the bottom with a pick tool, got it out of the way, and then it came off nicely. Um, in the back, you have your knock sensor, which I unbolted from the frame, and I unplugged. You can see right there. Just unbolt that, two 10 millimeter bolts, unbolt that from the frame, and I left that with the exhaust. Now I changed this when I got the truck a year ago. Just take the unit off. Um, and it does help when you take that off to be able to remove the uh, rubber muffler clamp that's up there. Um, and then there is a temperature sensor that is up here too. And then there is also, in the middle, 
we can see it right here there's another temperature sensor so you have a total of two temperature sensors on this on this uh, SCR your injector hose and your rear knock sensor uh, four 16 millimeter bolts here and the clamp is really nice uh, and then you just wiggle that now it's loose mine's gonna drop right out so um, sorry for the bad camera work but uh, I gotta get this done so you see what I see if you can see that something's falling apart now I've had this gap in here see that we'll see when we get it off but <clears throat> I put a gap in here and I've driven this thing about uh, oh, 60 miles probably with that gap open um, most of the time I was trying to regen which I believe regen is to clean this uh, this particulate filter. I don't know if there's any regen for the SCR. Maybe somebody can explain it better than me. But from what I understand, the regen portion is when it puts additional fuel through the exhaust to raise the temperature to burn the black carbon out of here into a gray ash. Then the gray ash, when it burns up, it will go and blow, theoretically, right through the SCR. The SCR is here for a different purpose to affect the emissions. So you have your... So your DPF is up here. At the rear of the SCR is a NOx sensor. This sensor senses the bad gases. The truck then injects DEF fluid, which is ammonia, and it works with a catalyst in the device to complete combustion, so you only get water and CO2 out. You don't get the NOx gases, which are harmful to the environment. This is the injector that, that uh, puts the DEF fluid in. And on a new SCR, I believe they're uh, efficient enough you don't go through a lot of DEF fluid. Now, does the DEF fluid clean the SCR? I don't know, but I'll tell you one thing. DEF fluid is not related to the regen cycle. So that's the thing you don't want to be confused about. So I'm going to go ahead and get this off, and we'll see what it looks like inside. Here we're <clears throat> going to compare an SCR from a mega cab to one from a crew cab. Okay, so we'll start at this end. Here's your mega cab, here's your crew cab. Uh, this is the same, same bracket. Okay, same bracket. Here's your DEF injection. It's got the same curvature. In fact, RH82117 891, same cover, however they put it on. Okay, now, let's look at the body of it. Okay, comes back here, important thing, temperature sensor, temperature sensor, temperature sensor, sensor, knock sensor, knock sensor. Uh, the pin for locating the exhaust, pin for locating the exhaust, okay. So, looks the same, except, yeah, you caught it. The silly little bracket to hold the wire for your knock sensor is there. <coughs> and your hanger. The mega cab hanger is back here. The crew cab hanger is back here. About the... Difference in the length of the cab, won't you say? So, what I will do, since I'm going to preserve this for posterity, because I like to save things, what I will do is I am just going to 
cut this off and re-weld it back here and use my regular old carbon steel welder and see how it goes so can you put a mega cab or better yet can you put a crew cab onto a mega cab ultimately the answer is yes because you know what else folks do you really need these you know why you got a hanger here okay your dpf is supported and then back here you have a hanger on this pipe here and here is this really needed well depends on the strength of this joint but you could almost get away with abandoning this in my opinion this is a lot of weight it's i don't know 50 pounds but uh, if, if you don't have a welder to relocate this, you can probably get away without it. Okay. Now, this has been on the truck for approximately three years. That's it, three years. Chances are, when the dealer did the warranty and they had to swap this out, they put the old one on. Probably, these are 200 bucks, roughly brand new. They, they just swapped it over. This is why I put heat on it. So you start cranking on it, a little tiny bolt, gone. Okay, so here we have it. Now, <clears throat> this is a 9mm socket. The head of this bolt was rusted so badly, uh, I had to drive this 6.9mm socket. Even a 6.10mm would not work. So let's see how it goes. Oh, there it goes. It's turning. Now, my rule is go back the other way. What that does is lets a little lubricant down in there. Oop. So you can see I removed this bracket with my 4 inch grinder right there. It up. Stainless steel, so it's not like there's a galvanized coating I'm cleaning up. Comparing to the other one, the bracket is uh, it's an inch and a half from this weld. So it's going to be right there. And this port is about in the center of this. And these have a lot of give to them. Obviously, we want it perfect, but they have give, so it can be off a little bit. I just got this going. There's no clicking. No clicking. I don't know if the clicking is uh, happens right when you start it or what. I, I've, I know I've done it when I've hooked up a trailer and heard it clicking, but... I don't know how warm it was, so we'll take it for a ride and see how it goes. Wrapping things up here, you can see this is my DPF, and it was kind of blown out. I had washers in a previous part where I tried driving the thing around to make it work, see if it would clean it out, and it actually blew chunks out because it had such low pressure on the back side. These are the chunks that came out of my DPF. Chances are my DPF would work if I just removed the debris. It would continue to work now that it's not blocked. It was just these, what, half inch end that was blocked. So you don't see this anywhere on the internet, what it looks like when you have a blocked DPF. And this is why. I Here's a picture of my DPF when I took it off before I ran it. So this is how it was blocked in the back, and here's a little bit more of it. To wrap it up, I did have to switch my def injector. There was no clicking. The gentleman I bought the SCR and the DPF from indicated that he believed the def injector was faulty. So thanks for watching, folks.